Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here, and this is episode 17 of my AC Milan Let's Play. And I'm sure you notice at the top, uh, the whatever you call this, the taskbar, or well, that's the bottom thing, uh, but whatever it's called, um, because I'm playing on the windowed mode, you can see the top part right there. Uh, the reason why that's I change it to blue, I in the previous couple, or the last one, not really sure, uh, but the last one for sure, I change it to like an AC Milan background, but to me it still look a bit weird, and yeah, it looks normal just having a blue background there, so I got through that, and yeah, we've got an easy match you would think uh, today against Sassuolo, their 20th, and really, like I said, I would be expecting, especially with attacking formation, to go out, score three or four goals, and yeah, just yeah to make our goal difference like plus three or four pretty much, uh, if not more, like score five, uh, because... Obviously, if you go and check them out right now, uh, where are they sitting? I'll have to go into the stages so you can see that the most conceded goals. Well, they're not the most conceded. They've conceded 15, but they've only scored three goals in nine games. Uh, so, yeah, we would should be, we really should be expecting to win and not concede, even though it's attacking formation. Uh, but one thing is a concern for me. i got my team set up already. Uh, we got one player back from injury, Rodney Strasser. Even though he's not amazing, he can come in midfield. Uh, mentally, he's very good, though. I'm impressed by mental his mental attributes. Uh, but technically, uh, he's basically just good at tackling. That's pretty much about his game. Uh, so he could be a very good defensive uh, center mid, really. And uh, he, Yeah, he's got okay strength and that kind of thing. Mental attributes, solid. And he, his tackling attributes are decent, like 14 marking. And 14, tackling, that's decent. So he can be one of those players that just uh, wins the ball back and just plays a simple pass or something like that. Uh, he's a decent player. Obviously, he's not going to be a world beater or anything, but he's still only 22. Um, obviously, can't improve a little bit. I mean, can't improve so much more. But he, he right now, he's a one-and-a-half star report, but he has potential to be two-and-a-half. So he still has potential to grow in his attributes and can be a decent player. Uh, if not part of the future, we can just make profit on selling him or something, I guess. But one thing, these injury, look at all these key players, uh, pretty much all these players, maybe not Paradis, start, all of these players will be starting my team pretty much. You've got Antonini, uh, you've got Sully Montari as well, I like him as a player, Rubinho, Mexes, uh, Boateng, and Paradis, obviously. So a lot of those players will be starting. So one thing, uh, before, I did want to check out uh, actually my fitness coaches and watch how, the under-18s don't really matter, just the actual fitness coaches of the first team. you got Simone Folletti. Fitness, only 11. Uh, you know, I set my director of football to buy my new staff, but definitely I need to make her, I need to make an interruption right here. And 14 from Vincenzo Manzi. So I think I'm, I have to go look out. And this is something I did want to show uh, within my series, some other things outside of just playing matches. Uh, so here's the staff search right here. I'm going to go for a fitness coach. Uh, where do we go? Uh, staff role. Fit. I just want to choose... The thing is, I don't want to make... Because for me, the, there's too much coaches and I don't want to waste my time doing that. That's why I gave it to my director of football to do a lot of them. But sometimes you have to intervene and you have to make a signing of a coach. Uh, so you can get someone with 20 fitness. You got this guy here, uh, Nesta Mario Marin from Colombia. Another South American. I like Cumberland, Columbia, <laughs> Colombian players, I should say. And yeah, he's a definitely a good one. He's got very good fitness. So hopefully he can want to join our club. Uh, but obviously, and for me, I just like to sign them. I see we're on maximum staff, so maybe I just it, I do have to rely on my staff because I don't like firing them like mid-season because obviously you have to pay for that. Like obviously, the worst one, uh, Simone Folletti, he's only got 11 fitness. I don't think that's good enough for a fitness coach, if you ask me. Because uh, if you do a uh, what terminate contract, you have to pay. I don't want to pay. That's the thing. That's why I, I just left everything to the director of football, so it wouldn't be my fault. So. Um, I may like try and influence that later or might ask the board for more fitness coaches or whatever. Uh, actually, I'm going to do that right now and then I'll try and do that in a later time. Uh, so let's, we're already improving youth facilities. That's very good. You know, I like to improve everything which I've done. Staff coaches, physios, staff wages. Now, they'll be under coaches allowed um, to increase specialization. Let's just choose that. Um, I always do this one. If this request isn't granted, I can see the club being left behind by arrivals. And like a lot of time it works. Let's see if it works here. And look at that. Okay, it didn't work. Of course, when I was making a video, it wouldn't work. But anyway, I'll move on. But at least that's the reason why I think my fitness is low. So I'll just leave it at that. But we have the maximum of fitness coaches the club wants. So that's really a really hard decision. And I obviously, I don't want to pay more money uh, just for a coach. 
um, and maybe just unlucky. And don't forget, we've got a good training facility, so players shouldn't get injured, but it's still start of the season. But right now, I'll just get into the match, and I did my team actually before the episode, so this like choosing my team doesn't take long. Uh, so that's one thing I'm going to do now so I can get through a bit more quickly because I know some people say I focus on it too much, and I'll just get into the match. Uh, again, but we have Zapata in there. That's a big thing I don't really like to see, but the thing is, uh, we got Felipe Mexes. Uh, people probably wonder why I don't like Zapata. I don't know. He just There's just something about him you don't like. I'm sure, uh, leave in your comments, is there one player that you... They're, a, they're like a solid player, but they just don't play well for you and you don't like them because of that reason. I suppose he's decent. And yeah, he hasn't been bad, I guess. But he's... Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like him for whatever reason. And But his physical... You think I should like him because he's got a good pace, physical attributes... And I'm not sure. Yeah, I just don't like him for whatever reason. Marking. He seems a solid defender just looking at his attributes as an overall. So I'll give him a chance uh, to prove himself to me. Okay, we can select one more sub. I just will... Yeah, I guess we'll put Flamini in there. And obviously, we can't choose more because they're all injured. And yeah, obviously some older players as well with Mexes, Antonini, Montari, and Rubinho. Maybe that's just the reason. Maybe it's just because the older players are getting injuries and I'm just looking too much into it. Uh, so here we have to give a player number to Rodney Strasser. We'll give him number 12. Yeah, and see if he can make it. But he's basically just a rotation option. And like right now, for the injuries we have, he can come in uh, when we need him too. So here, um, I honestly, I don't know any of these players at all uh, from Sassuolo. Obviously, I would imagine they just got promoted. I, sorry, I apologize. I don't know too much about the Serie A uh, because I've never managed in that. And I really don't watch it in real life. It's impossible to... Well, not impossible, they just don't show it for me. And maybe one match per week when it's on, but yeah, just not. I'm not, it's not really uh, covered too much in Australia, so I can't really get up too updated with the league unless I search. Yeah, unless I search specifically like on the internet, but I can't really be bothered. Uh, I'm not going to do that for every single league, but anyway. Uh, you know, behind my tactic. I don't. It doesn't really suit for doing opposition's instructions, even though the last match against Dortmund, that was just bad injuries. Uh, honestly, I just, and I still want to test it more because I, I, I make changes if I find something that's not working. So I may make changes to it. Uh, you'll see throughout the series. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But anyway, the team talk wasn't great there. They're probably noticing me doing the same team talk uh, for so much weeks in, weeks in a row. But uh, yeah, I always say, but no one leaves suggestions. So I might have to search myself for good team talks. Uh, but for me, when I search for the best team talks, there's just too many options and it's just too confusing. And I just give up and just try and do my own. Anyway, getting into the match now, Fernando, Notarino. Uh, hopefully we can, I just want to dominate, just see my team dominate. Nice ball, or well, not really nice, it was could have been a good chance for us. But still keeping the ball early in the match right here. Normally it isn't a chance, but we get a free kick here. Uh, Bianchi could be in trouble, let's see what the ref is going to do with him right now. Uh, it's just a yellow, but early in the match for, I don't know if he's a defender or not. Uh, but it, well, I guess for any play it's bad. And Balotelli, you know, he scored a free kick a couple weeks ago, which was long overdue. So uh, that was very good by him. And uh, yeah, please leave your comments of your thought on the series because the more good comments I get, the more motivated I get. Like if I have an episode where I only get a couple comments and they're not really, uh, not, I don't know, not really amazing comments, like saying they really enjoyed and that kind of thing or just whatever. I don't know, I just get less motivated to make it. Uh, Al-Sharari, Oh, that was quite, could have been an early chance, but he was offside anyway. And yeah, like I said, the more comments I get, um, yeah, the more motivated I actually... Uh, like, if I, say if I upload this video and I get, what, two comments, and they're not, like, really amazing comments, they're just, like, the normal comments I get. Uh, nothing to... Just telling me uh, which players to sign or something. Uh, you get that all the time, I guess, but you get just a couple of comments. It doesn't really make me motivated to make the videos, and that's a hard thing. Uh, so I definitely feel for even people with less subscribers than me that hardly get any comments, especially for Football Manager. As you see, Al Sharari took a shot. And yeah, if I got no comments in my videos, like I know some people who do Football Manager and they have, oh, another chance. Yeah, I, like I said, a lot of people do Football Manager. It's hard to get subscribers from Football Manager, like I've said plenty of times uh, to other people who've asked me for help and that kind of thing. Uh, as I speak, that's another goal for Niang. <laughs> this guy's a superstar, but anyway, like I'm trying to say, but my team's creating too much chances. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of people struggle to get subscribers. So one thing I'm going to do, uh, or just views in general, one thing I'm going to do, I'm not sure weekly or something, just wait to see what Balotelli does here. It's going to be nothing, I think. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to do, I'm not sure if it's going to be weekly or something. Basically, I'm going to do 
uh, a re- not a review or what do I call it, like a shout out kind of thing to some football manager YouTubers. I probably think of like a top three and yeah, uh, leaving your suggestions for which football manager YouTubers you like, like you know, apart from me obviously. And uh, yeah, leave your comments. Like, who do you think like deserves like for me to like give them a shout out? And that's a penalty. Oh no, Balotelli, of course he dives. See, this is going to be the thing with Balotelli. He's going to be very controversial um, with his diving and whatnot. Uh, yeah, and like I said, leave in the comments uh, which football managers, football manager channels do you like to watch? And yeah, just leave them because uh, yeah, I definitely like to watch football manager. That's what made me motivated to start football manager videos. So I'm very happy to that uh, the people that made me. Oh, that's I told you. Well, that's not Balotelli dive, is it? Uh, didn't I say before Bianchi? He was gonna. It was way too dangerous to pick up a yellow card in the first minute of the game. But you got to be careful, Balotelli as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll try and stop talking about that now. But yeah, uh, that's something I want to introduce, and hopefully you appreciate that. That's why I'm trying to talk about it because I think it's a good thing to do. And yeah, I just want to see because sometimes it's hard to find other football manager channels because of the low amount of views they get when you're just starting new. So uh, yeah, leave in your comments who do you like to watch, and I'll see what I can do with that. But Al Sharari comes in, and another chance we could have easily scored a couple goals already. Like I said, and I'm expecting to win this goal or win this game by at least three goals, uh, especially with a red card they have now. And I'll continue to go on the attack. And yeah, with this match, we could easily get in the top three uh, for the European, uh, the Champions League, obviously qualifying in the Serie A. It's top three, not top four compared to cha- the Premier League. Uh, but here, it's a solid performance. But we could have scored way more. Niang scoring his fifth. And playing on the wing, he's still scoring. So definitely going to keep him in that position right there. And the future is going to be amazing if Niang's just doing the job right now. Uh, I'll just say I'm happy with the performance. Balotelli, of course, he's getting switched off. I'm just going to say, I'm not sure how to talk to Balotelli. Uh, just, I need to f- tell him to avoid getting another yellow card. He needs to calm down, pretty much. But yeah, that's the hardest, ta- to me, that's the hardest task in Football Manager, to keep Balotelli happy. <laughs> that's the hardest thing to me, uh, to keep Balotelli happy. But anyway, we'll see what they're going to do with this. And hopefully, I was going to say we should defend this, but honestly, I want to score more goals, like I said, and to be entertaining as well. And who knows, goal difference may play a big difference uh, towards the end of the season. But And most likely, they're probably not going to score against us because they only scored three for the whole season. But who knows, we do have Zapata there. <laughs> but he's been he's been decent. I suppose just a couple bad games in my questionable tactics I used before uh, that weren't too amazing. They were average. Um, let's see what we can do. De Chilio, uh there was a defender shot. <laughs> anyway, Fernando, the pressure is on. That would have been offside. That would have been offside by Balotelli now. Balotelli! Oh, that was close by Balotelli. And that's the reason. For some reasons, Balotelli, he's, you don't like him, obviously, because he gives away these yellow cards, can get red cards occasionally. Uh, but he just pulls off some magnificent stuff. Like you saw the free kick a couple episodes ago, and he's been a decent player, scoring a good amount of goals. The Chilio, can he score this time? Nah, uh, he can't shoot. Uh, he's very good defensively and a solid passer and crosser and dribbler down the flanks. But as a like as a shooter, or as a shooter, as a fin- like a striker, he definitely can't do that kind of uh, finishes as my other strikers would. So he really needs to just uh, focus on the passing. So I'll wait to see what comes from this highlight right here. And yeah, we'll see what we can get if we can get a goal or something. I'll just wait to see what happens. Uh, who's this? Vel- Sometimes it's hard to see their name from far. Uh, but anyway, they're making a sub, so I think we should do the same. And like most of the time, I just do three subs straight away because yeah, I can't be bothered with uh, uh, just doing one and then doing another one unless yeah, unless it's like earlier in a match. But I'll just see uh, Notarino. Who who should we bring on right here? I'm going to give actually Strasser a chance, uh, even though he's 90 condition. Uh, I want to give him a chance, see what he can do for us. Montalivo as well. Uh, we'll bring in another centre mid. Maybe just bring in Nigel De Jong just to keep that a bit more. Uh, keep it a bit more defensive. And he's got good passing as well, so he's good going forward. And who should we make as the last sub? Balotelli, yeah, he hasn't played that great. So I'm going to give who Pizzini a chance. He's done well for the chances I've gave. I suppose you probably think, why don't I give him more chances? He's done like, okay, uh, if not very good. Uh, so we hear De Jong relax, overly so. But yeah, I suppose uh, that was bad for him. But he's an experienced player, so he knows what to do. Uh, so it shouldn't really affect him too much. He just... Yeah, he knows what the job is to do, to be done. Uh, but there shouldn't be any pressure. We're playing against the team that's last, so we should be expecting to win, uh, which we are doing. So uh, this performance has been very good. 
and yeah, that's all I can say about it pretty much. We'll just see what happens now. Vergara, I'm just giving all these young players so much. They're going to be amazing in the future with the amount of game time I'm giving them early. Strasser finds Pizzini. Uh, that was a bit wide of the mark by Pizzini on that occasion. Uh, and yeah, you notice I'd never use shouting instructions. I don't know. I, I don't really... I just like how my tactics, how I have them. And yeah, they seem to be doing good so far. So I don't really see why I need to change it. I suppose the start of the season... Oh, another chance. Like I said, we should have scored at least a couple goals right now. But yeah, like I said, I don't like to... I mean, what was I going to say? You're my early tactics. You know, they take a while to get fluid and all that kind of thing. And now, you can see the good performances coming through. I suppose I changed it a little bit. But yeah, like I said, that's what you have to do in the game. As Al Sharari, a chance to score here. Another shot on target. Their goalkeeper's been fairly good. And yeah, but we are definitely piling on the pressure. But we need another goal because, you know, they can score a late goal. And obviously, that's bad. Uh, so that's why I want to keep on the attack to score a second and not just go defensive and let them attack me. So uh, definitely another goal is what's on the cards for me. And yeah, I think we deserve at least one more. Uh, but yeah, this is a very crucial match. I definitely don't want to concede a late equalizer because as I said previously, uh, we have a good chance to come. Uh, okay, there was a wasted ball right there. Uh, but anyway, a lot of people would have thought I would have got fired with my early form, but I'm definitely improving, and I wouldn't be surprised people in the other videos, like earlier episodes, I probably think I should change tactics. Uh, and I did a little bit, but I, was, I wasn't displeased as I probably should have been. Uh, the results were bad, but I wasn't so mad about the performances, like because I wasn't conceding so many goals apart from some Champions League matches. Uh, like against Dortmund, but you're going to get that occasionally. But I was pro happy with my performance. We just couldn't finish, and that's that was the big difference. Uh, we had a lot of chances, but we just couldn't get the goals on the scoreboard. And I suppose it's the same situation right now. And to be honest, we're lucky we're playing against a team like Sassuolo uh, because they're probably not going to get a goal against us. But as I say that, look what happens here. Machado, we should defend this here. We should defend it. Good Vergara and Fernando. Fernando's been very good. He's good in the transition, but then he just goes back to Abiati. And I'll show you my new goalkeeper I signed. If you uh, didn't watch the earlier episodes, I'll show you him. He's in the reserves, out on loan. He's doing very solidly. Um, he's a Greece goalkeeper. I just can't remember his name right now. Uh, yeah, Capino. He's very good. He's only 18 and getting first team performances just in one league below. So he's doing well. Strasser. There we go. Pazzini. He's been so consistent this season. I haven't even gave him so many games, but when I've put him on, he's done well. And... How about the guy that got the assist? Uh, what's his name? Is he there? Uh, hopefully he comes here. So yeah, Strasser. Uh, Strasser, let's see what he does here. He gets the ball, uh, puts in a decent cross like behind the defender there. And Pizzini, clinical finish. Uh, he's probably more reliable than Balotelli, but you know Balotelli can do the unpredictable. Some matches can go again. He can get a hat-trick. And in this match, does nothing. He gets a yellow card for diving, and that's pretty much it. And then Pizzini, who's probably... He's more experienced and more professional, so that's probably the difference. I suppose you could say Sal Balotelli, but that that's a big thing because he has the potential to be one of the best strikers in the game. He still has very high potential. Al Sharari. Uh, yeah, this match has been decent. 2-0. I was probably expecting a bit more, uh, but it, like... You would take it, obviously. If you told me at the start of the game it's a 2-0 win, you'll take that. You say calm. Uh, it was a good win. So, you see Balotelli, he's, he has that personality that doesn't really care about what you say. He just switches off, And but his performance definitely was not good enough. So, yeah, leave your comments. Do you think I should... Uh, look again, Gerson Vergara. Only 18 years of age. Yeah, still 18. And he's one of our best players by average rating. Go to history right here. Been beastly in the league. And European competition as well. I suppose we couldn't ask more from him as a younger player. And that's why I want to put like all these South American players in the game so I can sign them. They're definitely good talents. But look at that. 10 shots on target. Uh, yeah, he probably should have got more goals. And there, we move up to third. Even though below us, let's see who has games. Yeah, you got Udinese. If they get any result, though, leapfrog us. Anyone else as well. Uh, you got Inter as well. So we're in a good position right now, being third. And Katana, you think, eventually will... Uh, go above them gradually as they're probably going to... Like, they're expected to come mid-table, so you expect them to go a bit lower. Uh, so, yeah, after a really bad start to the season, uh, we're back up right now. That's why I said it was a bit early for people saying I might get fired because I'm right back up there right now, but some very important matches. You've got Udinese. Look, the next three matches against Udinese, Real Madrid, and Napoli. There's some big matches right there, and only one of them at home. And yeah, we can't qualify for the Champions League like I saw from you saw from last episode. And you see Napoli now, they're in good form, so it's going to be hard. You've got big players here. You've got Flakari, very good player. Uh, not very good. Like, he's decent. He scores goals. Uh, mental attributes helps to that. He's very good mentally, so that helps, as I said. And Insigne, he's a very good player. 
a uh, good dribbler and all that kind of thing. So he's someone you have to watch out for. And not to mention Edison Cavani. Again, a fantastic striker. He's going to be one to stop. And yeah, he's, he's going to be a danger, no doubt. 2-0 win uh, for us right here. You see the match confidence. It's lifting right now. Uh, you see, they were disappointed with my Dortmund result. Of course, you have to be. But again, uh, let's see board promises. What has gone lower? Uh, to me, they think w we were superb on that before. But the thing is, we're proving on our results now, but that's gone back. So hopefully, uh, we're doing well. And yeah, they're pleased we reached the group stages. They weren't expecting me to reach further. So that was good. Uh, the board is pleased that we can uh, on course to reach for the uh, Serie A title. So that's improved. So we're doing okay right now. Um I just want to say my overall position is secure, so that's very good. And yeah, everything is doing well. Our signings or our players are doing well, so that's good to see. And let's just see on the couple other messages we have right here. Tosotti, he's a very good in assistant manager. He's got some very good attributes. But again, I'll leave it like that. I'll try and I want to get these. Oh yeah, like I said, I was going to show you. Uh, what is it called? I was going to show you Capino, the under not under twenties uh, in the reserves. Uh, where is he right now? Uh, Stefanos Capino, he's worth 850k, which is a decent amount for an 18-year-old, improving some attributes here, and he's on loan at Navarra, obviously in Serie B, you see there, he's been doing well, he's only he's averaging conceding one goal every match and picked up four clean sheets, so he's doing decently, uh, so let's see how that's like leading them, uh, yeah, they're only 12th, they're probably just going to come mid-table, probably not going to get relegated, but who knows, still early in the season, and yeah, uh, you would think he'll be a player for the future, uh, the scout report, because he's obviously not in our team, he's on loan, and he has potential to be a leading Serie A goalkeeper in the future, so obviously he's going to be the successor uh, to Abiati, and I think he can be. Leave your comments on him, do you think he can be good enough for the Serie A, and like that really high world-class ability, uh, he does have the potential, so definitely getting the first team experience is going to go a long way for him to reaching his potential. So right now, uh, yeah, I'll end it here. Leave your comments, leave your thoughts, how I've improved, and all that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a comment of everything I spoke about in this episode, and I'll see you guys next time for the next match against Udinese.